Hi, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today we're gonna to be going through the powerlifting belt tutorial. This is everything that you need to know if you're thinking about buying your first powerlifting belt. So the first thing is, why should we wear a belt? Now, most people like to wear a belt because it's gonna help you lift more weight by increasing intra-abdominal pressure. Most people will wear a, a powerlifting belt when performing the squat and deadlift, but the bench is 50-50. Not everyone is gonna get much out of a belt and it can affect your arch. So that's, again, up for preference. If you're someone like Didier Vasu, you're probably going to use the belt for everything, even bicep curls, because that extra little bit of intra-abdominal pressure is going to help you get that extra mechanical tension. The final misconception that people have with their powerlifting belt is that it's there to directly protect their back. Now, this is false. We wear a powerlifting belt to improve performance and to increase intra-abdominal pressure. You don't directly wear a belt to protect your back. If you are worried about your back, we do recommend you speak to a coach and maybe have a look at your technique and also review your program. You can also look at some of your recovery modalities such as your sleep, protein intake, and hydration. If you're not nailing these basic markers, you may want to look at those first. So before we discuss actually using the belt and where to place it and how to get the most out of your belt, we're going to explain intra-abdominal pressure. Now, the reason it's important to understand this is because this is what's going to make you stiffer and tighter and more rigid when you lift and actually allow you to lift bigger loads. So intra-abdominal pressure is basically when we breathe in, the diaphragm pushes down into our organs and fluids. These organs and fluids then push out into our stomach, into our low back, and create an area of higher pressure. It's important to note that this happens even without a belt on. So the belt just amplifies this pressure and we get a bigger increase in pressure, which then allows us to lift more. So you're probably thinking, where do I position the belt? It's my first time using it, where do I put it on? Now, Ultimately, it is up to your preference. Some people you'll see wear the belt really, really low around their belly button. Some people wear it nice and high covering a lot of their ribs. Again, this is something that you probably wanna work with a coach to figure out what is best for you, but ultimately it's gonna be where you feel you can produce the most amount of pressure or you feel subjectively the most amount of pressure. So I personally like to wear my belt a little bit higher. I have tried lower over times. It doesn't really feel that good for me and especially when I'm deadlifting, bending over, it just doesn't feel great. So I prefer wearing my belt higher, but it's something that I do recommend you play around with. And especially when you're first using the belt, try out different positions. So the next thing you need to know, once you've figured out where you're gonna place the belt, whether it's high or low, you need to know how to effectively utilize the belt. Now there's two key things here that you wanna focus on when trying to get the most out of your belt. The most important thing is that you keep the ribs down. And we call this the stacked position, rib cage, direct over the pelvis. Now that we've set the stacked position of the rib cage over the pelvis, the next thing you want to do is maximize intra-abdominal pressure. Now a common misconception is that to do this you need to take as much air in as possible. That's not necessarily the case. You want to take as much air in to the point where you subjectively feel that you have the most pressure. And this might be just a little bit before a maximum breath in. So now that we understand why to use a belt and when we should start using a belt, let's compare some of the most common belts that you might see. But basically, we've got a Wylander belt here, an Inza lever belt, and an SBD belt. Firstly is the thickness. You'll see the SBD belt is 13 mils thick, so it is quite thicker. So in terms of getting intra-abdominal pressure, I feel, and most people that I've spoken to feel that they can get a little bit more out of the belt because it is thicker. The Wylander and the Inza are thinner. Now these can be better potentially if you're newer to lifting because they can be a little bit easier to break in earlier on, but still all three belts when brand new can bite your ribs a little bit. The next thing you probably noticed already is the buckle. So we have three very different buckles here. Um, we've got a double prong or quick release on the Wylander, which looks like that. We have a lever belt here on the Inza and also a lever belt on the SPD. Obviously, these are both lever belts, so why are they different? You'll see that with the uh, Inza, it's a fixed buckle size. So the only way to actually change the buckle is by getting a screwdriver and undoing it. Now, this can be a bit tricky if you wanna make quick adjustments from day-to-day -day training or even in the session. Whereas you'll see with the SPD belt, we have a quick 
change system here where we can literally plug it in there, plug it in there, plug it in there. So the reason that I prefer this type of buckle where we can make adjustments very quickly and just from set to set to set is because I actually change quite a lot within a session. So I will use a different buckle size from squat. And then if I have a bench session, I actually prefer the belt tighter and go a couple holes further in. So even within a session, I make quite a lot of adjustments. So this, bu this buckle is a lot easier to make those adjustments, whereas you have this buckle that you have to unscrew. So when buying a new belt and wearing a powerlifting belt for the first time, you need to understand the breaking in process. Now this is the process of the, of the belt actually molding to your body and the leather becoming softer around the parts that have a lot of contact with your body. So what typically happens early on is that you're gonna wear the belt and you're gonna have a lot of bruising and soreness to begin with. This is a totally normal and natural process. So don't get freaked out if you are a bit sore on the first few times you wear a belt. Um, so what people typically do is they'll get a belt and start doing this and trying to break it in themselves. You do not want to do this. You want the belt to break in naturally just by wearing it as much as you possibly can. So don't try and bend the belt and break it in like so. Wear it for as much training as you can and it will break in naturally over time. And the final thing to consider when buying a belt is what equipment is allowed in what federation. You need to check with the federation you're competing in if the belt is approved for that federation. Because the last thing you want to do is buy a belt and then you're competing in a specific federation and you're not allowed to wear that belt in your competition. So I know for a fact that SBD is approved in pretty much all federations. So it's a safe bet to buy this belt. Uh, and it's also gonna last a very, very long time. If I was to recommend a belt as a powerlifting coach and as a power lifter myself, I would always go with the SBD. Absolutely love this belt. Um, and pretty much recommend it to all my clients to get. It's the good old buy nice or buy twice. So the final thing to know when it comes to buying a belt is getting the size right. Now, ultimately, if you have friends that have the same belt, you can try their belts on and get a reference point. But if you don't, what we recommend is to get a, a tape measure and measure where you're going to wear the belt. So we recommend probably just above the belly button. If you're planning on wearing it a bit higher, maybe measure a little bit higher. And then basically you need to, with, S with SBD, they have a sizing guide. With each size, so small, medium, large, extra large, and so on, there is a 20 centimeter range. You pretty much want to fall in the middle of this range. If you would like to see the sizing guide for all sizes, it is in the description box below, so click on that and have a look. If you do want any further information, we recommend hitting up City Strength in Sydney. Me. Uh, they are the SBD provider here in Australia, so I recommend if you've got any further questions going and speak, speaking to them. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you understand better why we, you want to get a belt, how the belt works, and then hopefully how to size the belt. So good luck with your first belt purchase, and good luck with your lifting, and as always, happy lifting. Oh, like, subscribe, comment. Don't